everyone, Sean Frangella here with a new After Effects and Cinema 4D tutorial about how to link optical flares with animated Cinema 4D scenes. So here we have this animated logo that I've set up and you can see that there's some lens flares on the front and back of this logo that are being created with Video Copilot's optical flares. And in this tutorial, I wanna dive into how to get those to link up correctly with scenes that were animated in Cinema 4D or Cinema 4D Lite, as well as some specific issues to keep in mind and how to fix them. So if we take a look at my After Effects project here, we have this Cinema 4D file with our logo and all of our animation. And on top of that, we have a couple different optical flares layers that are linking up with the animation. And if we take a look at these nulls, we can see that we have all of this track data so it lines up. Now there's a couple key parts to this to keep in mind. If I open up my Cinema 4D file, by pressing Command E, which will open up Cinema 4D or Cinema 4D Lite. This project will work on either of them. We have our logo animating, and in that logo, we have a couple of nulls with some specific tags that are following the animation of this logo that in After Effects, we can use some Cineware commands to extract those. And in addition to that, if I just put this on software real quick so we can scrub through, we have some very specific things to fix in this case where there's the flare in the front, which is no problem to show, but there's this flare on the back that we can see it needs to be blocked or occluded by the front of the logo when it passes by. And the way that we can do that is by ripping out a depth mat, which is this cool black, white, and gray looking image to tell it when this should show up. Because otherwise, if we had this and we didn't have that, it would just show up on top of everything and not be behind the logo. So there's a couple of really specific tricks as far as Cinema 4D, After Effects, and Cineware compositing that will help us pull this off. So let's start this from scratch. Here I have that Cinema 4D file inside of After Effects, and if I pull that onto a new composition, it makes this composition. And this could be any Cinema 4D project with animation. Or if you want to get an idea of how I built this one, I went through it in the earlier parts of this series where you can learn about how you can extrude a logo starting from vector assets and illustrator get cinema 4d materials set up learn about lighting and hdr images and set up the animation so check those out real quick if you want to get up to speed on those topics in cinema 4d or cinema 4d light or if you have your own project and you just want to know how the hell to connect these things and you want me to get to the point we'll dive into that now so i'll open this cinema 4d project which again i could do in after effects by pressing command e or just opening in Cinema 4D. So here we are, we have a logo with some animation on different properties and we want to drop the points where we would want to rip out those optical flares inside of that logo. So the way we can do that is we're going to create a null up here under create null. And I'll call this front flare for now. And we want to drop that into a group or null group wherever that animation is. So in this case, this container that's the logo has that rotation property on it and our camera is animating separately to kind of push in on this scene. So what we can do is drop that front flare null into that logo group and then looking in my different views, I'm just going to line that up where I want it to be. So I kind of look over my different views and make sure it's dropped on the front. And if I want to get a better idea, I could take a look at a frame where it's more straight on in our front view. So we can get that lined up and I'm just gonna lock it on to the front left of this logo. Now, since it's in this container that's animating, it's gonna follow along. If I click that front flare null and just scrub through my timeline and take a look. And if I want a second one, I could just duplicate that by holding command and dragging up. And then I'll just look for my multiple views and we'll put this one on the back of the logo. So I'll just rename this back flare and drag this up and place it where I want it. Now the cool thing about this is we could also have animation on these. So say we want this flare to be in the front and we want it to slowly be moving left to right or doing anything that we want. So what we could do is animate any of those properties. So in this case, I would animate looks like Z over time. So at the beginning, I'll have it on the left and I'll click to make a keyframe. And then when it comes more in the frame and slides to the right. I'll just animate Z this way. 
and that way it's gonna move only on that one axis, and then I'll click to update that keyframe, and now that front one is following the logo and then animating separately on its own. Now that's step one, we wanna get these nulls set up where we want the optical flares to be starting from, because in After Effects we can connect nulls to lights and the lights can project the optical flares or other plugins, and back in After Effects, what we wanna do is use this Cineware effect to extract our scene data, but if I just press extract now, it's not gonna rip out those nulls. It will rip out all of our lights and our camera. So in Cinema 4D, we need to do one additional thing. On both of these nulls, we need to add an external compositing tag, and we can get to that by right-clicking and going to Cinema 4D tags, external compositing. And we could have that open up a solid when we bring it into After Effects, but we don't need that. We just need that one null and I'm gonna duplicate that tag by holding Command and dragging up, and we'll put the same tag on that back flare. And then I'll save this. And now in After Effects, if I do that Extract Command, I wanna make sure that I'm at the beginning of my composition. And then on that Cineware effect, I can do that same Extract Command. And what it's gonna do is pull out our camera, any lights we have, which in this case, we don't need them, so I'll just delete all those and any nulls we've marked with external compositing and add keyframes for position and XYZ rotation so that all those things will line up in After Effects. We click on either of these, we can see it does follow along exactly and then add in any animation we might have added like we did on that first null. So that's our big step one is just pulling those nulls out of Cinema 4D using Cineware. Now we want to set up optical flares and link all this stuff together. So again, at the beginning of my composition, I'll get started with setting up that plugin. So I'll go to layer, new, solid, and I'll call this flares, and I can make it whatever color, it doesn't matter. I just like to make it a bright color because I'll notice it in the stack. And then I'm gonna get optical flares, which again is a video copilot plugin, but this would work with particular or anything in After Effects that you can connect to lights. I'll drop that into my solid. That gives me my default settings. What I want to do is have render mode be on transparent so it blends through. And then I'll click options and I'll just go grab a default setting presets and let's do motion graphics. And I can just grab any of these and go to OK. And that's going to give us our default flare. But of course, by default, it's not going to be following anything. Now, what we can do to get this to line up correctly is on our optical flares effect change this from source type to track lights and now it's not going to show up as anything because we don't have any lights so i'll make a new light by doing layer new light and i'll make a point light and just press ok now we don't see where that is because it's not oriented with our scene you can see it ends up way over here but that's why we wanted to set up those nulls that follow our scene because what we can do is take this light and then hold shift and parent it to one of the nulls. That way it's gonna snap it to where that null is and parent it. And you can see it shows up where that null is and then we'll follow that along. So that works great for this front one. We could even turn down the light intensity a bit. But if we go through that same process for our back null, so let's do that real quick. I'll duplicate this light and rather than being parented to that front flare null, I'll shift parent to the back null It'll follow along, but you can see it just covers up the logo. It doesn't get blocked by it because there's this whole Cinema 4D scene with our logo in the background, and this is just a layer in After Effects that's sitting on top of it. So we need to do something a little different to address that problem. Well, how do we do that? So let's just delete that second light and figure this out. So how we can do this is have multiple instances of optical flares layers and have one for any lights that are on top of this. We'll just call this top flares, and then have a second one that I can create by duplicating this and call this back flares. And then we're gonna rip out a depth mat from our Cinema 4D file and use that under our track mat settings, which are right here, to be blocked by everything. Well, what the hell does that mean? Well, let's take a look at that. Real quick, what we wanna do first is set these up as different light names. So we have this top flare, we have this light that goes along with it, we're gonna make a back flare on a different one. We don't want them both to pick up the same light, so what we can do on the optical flares layer for this front flare is chain name starts with anything to something like A, and then it's gonna shut off 
because this light isn't named something that starts with A, but we can rename this as A light one. So it only will display on lights that start with A. And then on this back flare that we're gonna use for the second one, we can change this to name starts with B. So then I'll make another new light. I'll call this B light. We could even change the color and it'll pick up a different color because we have used light color checked on here. So let's do that. We'll make it an orange and our back flares make this set to B. And then same process, we need to grab this new light, shift parent that to our back null, so it'll snap behind it, maybe take the intensity down. But again, it's just showing up on everything, and right here it should be blocked by that logo, and we should only be seeing these edges. So let's fix that. Well, what the hell's a depth mat? Well, again, what we want to get out of the Cinema 4D file as easily as we can is a black, white, and gray version of this where we can use it as a track mat as we see here in the final project where it will block out whatever is white. It will show wherever it is black. And if, so what we need to do is jump back into Cinema 4D and set this up. So how we can set this up is go to our render settings up here and we want to check on this multi-pass and then right click and check depth. And what that's going to do is let us rip out just a depth pass like we just saw in our final project and layer in After Effects above the optical flares to use it as a track mat. So I'm going to close this and we need to do one more thing on our camera in our scene. So we do need to have a camera for this to work. We need to set something as a focus distance, which will be that center point where it's going to use that as the center point from where we're going to project that black and white image. So what we want to do is on our camera, we could use this back flare because we know that's where it's lining up too. And I'll put that as my focus object, save this project file. And then in After Effects, I want to duplicate the layer that is the Cinema 4D file. So I'll just do Command or Control D. And I'm going to put that above my optical flares layer. And I don't want to just see the actual final rendering of the file. What I want to do is check this multi-pass option, which if we change our renderer to standard final, we can check that on. And since we set up that depth layer, we can click set multi-pass. And that's going to open up this little dialog that lets us pick which multi-pass layer. So we could rip out something like the specular highlights or the shadows or reflections separately. But since we set up that depth layer, we can click depth and go to OK. And what that's going to do is change the rendering to this cool looking black, white, and gray image that we can put right above our flare layer. And on our flare layer, we'll set that to a track mat. We'll use luma mat inverted. And what that's going to do is use white pixels of this image to block out and mask a long time that optical flares layer. So I'll do luma inverted. And if I solo just that flares layer, now you can see the outline of where that logo is and see how that's lining up. So if we take a look at a couple different frames, you can see how that's blocking it out. Now we need to push that a bit. So what we can do on this copy of the Cinema 4D file that is our depth pass is get brightness and contrast as an effect, drag that onto the layer below Cineware, and we can just really push the contrast as well as the brightness. And if we turn this off, that way we can see as we adjust this, it's going to block it out more because we're pushing the contrast of that depth pass to where it's almost completely white and black and we only get the little bits of grays. So now if I unsolo that and we have everything layered on top of each other, and make sure our depth pass is hidden. Now we can see how this all stacks and works out. So let's break this down layer by layer. We have our Cinema 4D project file. We have that top flare that's animating and following along the front. And then we have this back flare that is sitting below a depth pass of that same Cinema 4D project file and sent to Luma inverted as a track mat. If it was set to Luma mat, it would do the opposite of show only inside the logo. So that's why we don't want that. We want Luma inverted. And then it'll do the opposite of that. 
And then as everything is animating, it'll all line up. So it's a little tricky, but if you keep in mind the external compositing nulls and the depth pass in Cinema 4D, you can really do some creative things with Cinema 4D files and optical flares, as well as any other plugins like Trap Code Particular or anything that works with After Effects lights. So I hope you learned a lot. And if you watch this whole series, I hope you learned a lot on putting it all together and building out a 3D logo, animating it, lighting and rendering it, as well as some tricky little Cineware settings in After Effects to rip information out and block out things and use track mats to occlude lights and optical flares. And if you want to back up and learn more about how we got here or check out any other of my tutorials, be sure to click on those thumbnails where you can learn all about Cinema 40 and After Effects, motion graphics, visual effects, and compositing. There's a lot of different tutorials on a lot of topics in all of these fields. So be sure to check those out if you want to keep learning and learn more. And if you want to get weekly tutorials, you can subscribe to the channel at youtube.com slash Sean Frangella, where I talk about all sorts of stuff. And you can hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella. If you have any questions, requests for tutorials, or want to interact that way. As always, thanks for watching. This was a really fun little trick you wanted to set up. And I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at Sean Frangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.